MCAT 2015 CRAM Physical Foundations Question Flashcard 69 Kinetic Energy Work and Stopping Distance The stopping distance D is the distance a vehicle will travel from the point when the brakes are fully applied to when it comes to a complete stop. A race car with a combined mass of 24, 25 kilograms with the driver is traveling along a racetrack with a velocity of 100 meters per second. The coefficient of friction between wet asphalt and rubber is 0 0.2, while the coefficient between dry asphalt and rubber is 0 0.9. Which of the following statements is true about the stopping distance, assuming friction does all the work for stopping? Would it be A, the stopping distance is directly proportional to the initial velocity of the car? Would it be B, the greater the coefficient of kinetic friction, the greater the stopping distance? Would it be C, both vehicles use static friction to come to a complete stop? Or would it be D? The calculated stopping distance is 4.5 times greater for a race car on wet asphalt than on dry asphalt. You decide. Hopefully you remember the four choices. I'll give you a moment to think. All right, hopefully you've pressed pause again, and if you've arrived at the answer, great. And if you haven't, that's great also. We're going to get into the particulars of the solution right now, okay? Okay, so in order to answer this question, it's essential that we come up with an equation for the stopping distance d, okay? And the car starts with an initial velocity v0 of 100 meters per second. All right, and then it comes to a complete stop with a final velocity, of course, of zero. So because it's traveling initially at 100 meters per second, the car has an initial kinetic energy, but no final kinetic energy when it comes to a complete stop, okay? All right, obviously, you know, the formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So if your final v or V final is zero, then kinetic energy goes to zero. That's why there's no final kinetic energy. So we have a change in kinetic energy. And whenever there's a change in kinetic energy for a process or a system, we can default to using the work kinetic energy theorem, okay? And um, Knowing that we have to default to this takes practice, and you would have to be well rehearsed in this type of problem solving. So if you didn't know right away that you have to use the work kinetic energy theorem, that's totally fine. Now you know, okay? And since we're told in the question stand that friction is doing the work to stop the car, the work done by the frictional force can be seen here, okay? All right, so... These are our coefficients of kinetic and uh, static friction. And this is our work kinetic energy theorem. A change in kinetic energy, as we just uh, you know, explained here, is equal to W sub net, where W sub net stands for the net work. Okay? And for those of you who watched my previous flashcard decks, you would know that the um, friction force is calculated by multiplying the force of friction times the normal force, okay? So that's going to be negative mu and d. We're negative, well, negative because we're stopping, okay? So we're, energy is coming out. And um, n stands for the normal force, and d is distance. Remember that the basic formula for work is a force, this portion, times a distance, okay? All right. Now, for the, also for those of you who watched other prior flashcard decks in this series, you would know that the normal force is always calculated from 
the force due to gravity because Newton's third law says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if gravity is pushing down to make uh, a substance weighty, you know, uh, then something is a force is pushing up, an equal and opposite force is pushing up if that object is not accelerating into the ground or whatever surface it's standing upon, okay? So the um, signs of the normal force and uh, the weight due to gravity might be different, but their magnitudes are the same. So that's why the normal force is equivalent to the magnitude of the force due to gravity or weight, mg. Okay, so now we see that we have incorporated three variables. Our, our coefficient of friction, either kinetic or static. The mass, gravity, we don't necessarily need. And the stopping distance, okay? All right. So now we have to uh, isolate the stopping distance in order to see the relationships between all the variables, including the velocity. But how are we going to include velocity? Well, remember earlier I said um, kinetic energy, the change in kinetic energy, is equivalent to 1 half mv squared. Here it's negative 1 half mv squared because we're ending with zero kinetic energy, so the system is going to zero. There's no energy is being taken out, not being put in. Okay, that's why it's negative. That's why it's negative here and there as well. Okay, all right, so now we can uh, set this equal to this. All right, so now we can set this equal to this. So we see that negative one half mv squared is equivalent to negative mu mgd. So our negatives are going to cancel out, and so are our masses. And we're left over with the following variables, and we can rearrange the equation to isolate uh, stopping distance, or d, on the left-hand side. Okay? So we're left with d, in, in this scenario, it's the stopping distance, equals v squared over 2 um, mu g. Okay? All right, so now let's think about our answer choices. Hopefully you remember them, which you probably don't, and that's fine. Our first answer choice discuss um, the stopping distance t being proportional to the velocity. Well, here we see that it is proportional, but it's proportional to the square of the initial velocity. So answer choice A is wrong. And um, as far as answer choice B and the, coef the greater the coefficient of um, friction, whether it's kinetic or static, um, this, the higher up the numbers are, the shorter the stopping distance, not longer, okay, not greater. Because if this number increases in the denominator, it's going to decrease the overall result, making the distance smaller, okay? So answer choice B is out. And as far as a race car on dry asphalt using static friction, um, yeah, that's what it uses if the asphalt is dry. But uh, something interesting that happens if the asphalt is wet is that the race car would come to a halt using kinetic friction, okay? And kinetic friction essentially slows something down slower than static friction. Static friction coefficients are always higher than kinetic coefficient friction. So, um... While the race car is on the wet asphalt, so the wet asphalt scenario would mean rolling friction or kinetic friction used to stop, okay? So they don't both use the same kind of friction. Two different scenarios, two different kinds of friction. So and basically, I overspoke on that one. Answer choice C is out as well. So by default, we're left with answer choice D which says that the calculated stopping distance is 4.5 times greater on a, for a race car on wet asphalt than one on dry asphalt. And we know that this is true because um, 
if you put 0 0.2 here in the denominator uh, and compare that to the result of putting 0 0.9 in for the uh, coefficient of static friction, this result would be 4.5 times greater than the result with static friction. When I said this result, I meant the result using kinetic friction, okay? So the ratio of 0.9 to 2 is 4.5, obviously. Then things get kind of hairy because you're sticking uh, these coefficients into the denominator. So that's why the smaller coefficient will have a 4.5 time greater stopping distance. And that makes sense because 